Welcome to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. It's six minutes past three. I'm not going to give you the telephone numbers uh, for a few minutes because I have, uh, as our guest today online, Reverend uh, Lindsey Williams. Reverend Williams, are you with us? Mills, I am here, and thank you for allowing me the privilege to be with you today, along with Dr. Rodriguez from Tijuana, Mexico. Outstanding, Doctor. It's good to have you back again, sir. Thank you very much for having us with with your show. I truly appreciate it. Uh, It's my pleasure. We've got a lot to discuss uh, today, but uh, uh, Doctor, I think it it would be very helpful for the audience, uh, many of whom may not have heard the previous broadcast, if you talked a little bit about what you do at your hospital that is above and beyond. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Well, let me tell you, we are a professional group that actually started back in the uh, second half of the 70s, in 1976 to be exact, because we were pursuing, uh, number one, unhappy with the way medical uh, was happening, and second, pursuing a different way to do things. We are absolutely convinced that uh, our body is uh, with uh, has a lot of wisdom, uh, has a lot of good ways to know where to go, and our bodies always want to heal, always want to be well. They're always going in that direction, and uh, it is us with what we do that blocks that possibility. So we were, we were contemplating the fact that when you go to the doctor because something is going wrong with you, nobody pays any attention to why your body is doing what it is doing. Your body is letting you know something, wants to give you a message that nobody listens. And all we do is send people for laboratory work x-rays and god forbid the laboratory doesn't say there's nothing in there because then you're going to be sent home or given an antidepressant or send be sent to on vacation because they're going to say everything is on your head but if they find something then you're going to be given prescription medication uh, with no chance whatsoever uh, because there is no understanding to begin with of what our bodies are suffering from and what our bodies are asking or even demanding for us to do in order to catch up, to function well, and to heal, to restore health in one word. And if we don't listen to our bodies and if we don't do any of these changes, well, what happens is what we have seen over and over again, and many of uh, your listeners will agree with me, uh, then what we're going to see is that we're going to go to the doctor, given a prescription, going back for more and going back for more, and we're going to be on pills for the rest of, the, of, of our lives. That's basically what's happening with people. We're giving them prescription medication, and all we do is we might give a little bit more or might be a little bit less, although the rule is that you're going to be getting more and more, not only more uh, pills, but different pills, more more other things, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, it happens that people are taking 14, 20 pills of, of prescription medication, uh, which in many cases is because of other symptoms that people develop, and, uh, and, and it cannot go on like this. We have, we have to stop thinking that medical care means giving somebody a pill or pushing a needle and, and that everything is going to be okay because it is not and we have seen it I mean a- anyone that's been around looking around what's happening in the last 50 years uh, can tell that uh, well medicine is not doing any better all I see is more and more people sick and the typical idea or the typical uh, situation where doctors tell you yes we're seeing more people because we're living longer I mean it really isn't true because we're seeing younger and younger people 
with degenerative diseases that are tripling their lives, that are incapacitating them, that are blocking their enjoyment and productivity and everything. And you can see people in their 30s and 40s that just are laying on a couch because they don't have the energy, they don't have the stamina, they don't have the interest to do anything. And all this is happening before our own eyes. We're seeing young kids dropping dead in the, in the sports field. We're seeing young guys with a myocardial infarction, with a heart attack, with a stroke, uh, that are going to be uh, with a big uh, incapacity for the rest of their lives. And many of the people that consider themselves in good shape, they're going to be taking a pill. They're taking something for uh, diabetes or for arthritis or for high blood pressure or for all these illnesses that we're seeing more and more that really look epidemic that uh, are basically chronic degenerative diseases for which medicine doesn't really have an answer. So with all these ideas, we decided we needed a place where we could take care of the body as what it is. The body is a biological, a wonderful biological uh, mechanism that was made in perfection, that has so many good things to offer us, so many functions, so many uh, alternatives to, to function well and to do the things. It has so many redundancies. If something fails, something else is going to work, et cetera, et cetera. But we, between our lifestyle and our medical care, we are literally depleting all these resources. We're damaging all these resources. And what we have to do is create an environment, like the hospital that, uh, uh, where we practice, where we provide for, for bed rest, for a sounds like a, uh, repeated, but it's really tender loving care. We have to look at ourselves with very, uh, with a lot of care, with with a really loving ethics, to try to give the body the chance to recover. How is how how our bodies are going to recover? Well, because we're going to put them on a clean environment, because we're going to detoxify. We put so many bad things in 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 our uh, bodies that we have to literally, I mean, I wish I had a vacuum cleaner or to sip, sweep all these things out of the body to clean it, but unfortunately that's not possible. So we have to go little by little and first and foremost not harming because we're, we're trying to heal, we're not trying to harm. So we cannot use any of those harsh medications that are very much uh, around now that in the end really don't, do, do not solve the problem. So uh, that's, that's what we do day in, day out. Do detoxification, do cleansing, do good nutrition. And I couldn't say enough about good nutrition. I could tell you that if people started right, uh, started eating right, beginning today, in 10 days, our chronic degenerative disease frequency is going to drop at least by half if not by more. We're killing ourselves <coughs> with the foods we're putting in our mouths. So our hospital has a very intensive nutritional program. Our pharmacy is three times the size, uh, I mean, our, our kitchen is three times the size of our pharmacy. Because remember the, the very, very old saying, I mean, uh, your food should be your medicine. And it's absolutely true. If we just learn how to eat, we just learned how to take care of the nutritional part. We're going to be doing a great service to our bodies and to the bodies of those we love, the ones that we're supposed to be taking care of. And, and I could point out uh, first and foremost, like our children. I mean, our children were entrusted us to, to us to be taken care of, to be fed, not to be filled. We, we, we don't have to fill them with empty calories. We have to feed them, and we have to make sure that we're providing those uh, bodies of these people that supposedly we, we, truly, we truly love with first quality nutrition that's going to make them grow well, get optimum health, function well, and be 
everything they can be. That's what what uh, why God entrusted us, our kids, because He thought we would be the best people in the world to take care of them. So, and that's what we have to do, and that's something that we take very seriously in the hospital. For us, what people eat is absolutely important. Is much more important than than what any needle or any pill can do. And of course, we are a hospital, so yes, we can also use some of those modalities of using a needle or anything like that, because we can do chelation therapy to detoxify heavy metals. We can do intravenous feeding, like in highly depleted people. We can do nutritional supplementation when we want to give a particular nutrient in, in, in a fast way to fulfill uh, an important gap or an important need of something. So we, we, we can do all those things. So Doctor, I have uh, already a caller. I haven't really uh, given out the phone number, but uh, uh, Adele has uh, some questions for you, please. Uh, Adele, welcome to K Talk. Hi, uh, Doctor. I, I just got on for the past maybe two minutes, maybe three, and I don't even know who is who you are. Can I have your name? Absolutely. I am Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez, and I'm the medical director of BioCare Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. And, and, and where is it? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm, I'm... Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, my gosh. I was already, I am like in... I have, my life has been in research in the same field that you are, that you're working in, and um, boy, would I love to come work for you guys. Well, I need that's a wonderful, job. because the more people get involved, the better off we're going to be all. Yeah, how do I uh, get in touch with you guys? Oh, well, we will give you my, we have an 800 number, we have an email address that we will be very happy to provide you. All righty. Why don't you give that 800 number, Doctor? Sure. It's 800-701-7345. Okay. 800-701-7345. That's correct. And it's Dr. Rodriguez? Yes. That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, I'm behind you 100%. Thank and, you. And... Um, Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. I've been a nurse. I was a nurse, and I had to get out of nursing. I couldn't take it. <laughs> um, that was quite a few years ago, so I've done a lot of research in uh, the natural health field, and food definitely is the answer, and um, our diet definitely is killing us. And it breaks my heart to see what is happening to Americans. And um, oh well, I would I I would love to talk to you and and be in touch. Thank you very much, Adele. Okay, thank you. Eight zero one two five four fifty eight fifty five. That is the number. Um, doctor, this is very interesting because it appears to me that the American medical profession is collapsing. Um, I just saw a story this morning. The fourth Georgia hospital has had to close because of Obamacare payment cuts. Have you been watching this debacle in the United States? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's very sad. It's very sad to see that uh, a government is going to is wanting to save money in something that. Uh, we, we just cannot afford to do. I mean, health care is one of the basic rights that uh, any, any individual should have, particularly in uh, what is supposed to be a democratic, progressive country. We're going to pause yeah. for a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show on K Talk. <clears throat> My guest is Dr. Rodrigo. Uh, Rodriguez uh, from Tijuana, Mexico, and he is here at the uh, suggestion of uh, Lindsay Williams, who actually takes treatments there. Is that right, Reverend? I sure do, Mills. I think it's the greatest hospital on the face of the earth. 
Now, Mills, most of your uh, listeners know my background that many years ago I actually was invited to be the chaplain to the elite of the world, and for three years' time I lived with the people that most people only hear about. Those people know where to go when they get sick. Isn't it amazing that some of these, Daddy Bush, for instance, turned 90 years of age this year, and uh, Mr. Kissinger, 90 years of age, just as well as a spry young person in their 50s. Why? Because they know where to go to get help when they need it. Well, one of them told me, uh, not Mr. Kissinger, by the way, I never met him personally, but one of the elite told me one day, he said, Lindsay, you've got to go to Biocare Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico, and go through their Alavis Artos treatment program. I did. I became utterly amazed when I saw people there who had had cancer in remission, sitting around the dinner table, happy as can be, at, at 10, 15, 20 years, five years, their cancer had been in remission, but they were living normal lives again. You don't have to die from these diseases. And after one visit there, I became so convinced until I've tried my best to help people realize that there is a place on the face of the earth where they can go and get their cancer in remission. Chronic fatigue syndrome, you don't have to suffer with it. Hepatitis C, it can be taken care of. All of your autoimmune diseases, but you cannot do it in the United States of America. Rheumatoid arthritis, my wife has rheumatoid arthritis. And when she went to BioCare Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico, and Dr. Rodriguez saw to it that she had stem cell therapy and all mills, please get on the subject of stem cell therapy with Dr. Rodriguez today because she hobbled into the hospital and after a stem cell therapy, first of all, of course, they used uh, chelation and intravenous feeding and then gave her stem cell therapy. And after that, she was walking perfectly normal and she's had rheumatoid arthritis now for about 12 to 13 years. So Mills, that is what I'm doing, is trying my best to help people realize that what you have on your program right now, Dr. Rodriguez, is hope. Well, you can't get that hope in America. Oh, gee, uh, there was a whole campaign based on hope and change. Oh, oh, that sure was. But number one, they called it what? Affordable health care? Number one, it's not affordable. Secondly, they said hope and they're closing up hospitals and not giving us much hope. Change? Oh, you better believe it. We've changed to the biggest socialistic nation you could ever imagine. Well, we won't get on that subject today because then I'd be back on my uh, other theories. But, uh, Mills, there is hope across the border in Tijuana, Mexico, and you have the right man on the line with you today to tell you about things. Now, a year ago, Kurt Mills, I was so sick I thought I was going to die. And I, I, that is not right for me because I had been probably one of the healthiest people on the face of the earth all of my life. I didn't know what it was to get sick. And for the first time in my life, I became so sick I thought I was going to die. I called up Dr. Rodriguez and I said, Doctor, I think I'm going to die. I'm afraid I won't. What can I do about it? He said, come on down. We'll be glad to take care of you. They did. And I, that's the story within itself. But there is hope, and it, but you, it's just within five miles of the border from uh, San Diego, Mills. And uh, I'm always anxious to get uh, out information that for some reason the medical profession wants hidden. Uh, we've got a case right now. Uh, you, you say the Harvard Medical, and there is an assumption that these are the creme de la creme. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the case of uh, a teenage girl by the name of Justina Pelletier. Um, <laughs> she has a sister that was medically diagnosed with a rare uh, mitochondrial disorder, genetic. And uh, this sister was being treated for it successfully and was uh, making progress. Well, Justina 
had the very same symptoms. She was asked to get a second opinion. They took her to uh, the Harvard Children's uh, Clinic. They seized this girl, took her away from her parents, and said, no, she's a hypochondriac. It's all in her head. And uh, the father was outraged. He spoke out about this and was hit by the Department of Child Services with a restraining order and the judge issued a gag order. Well, the, the father said, what are you doing? You're kidnapping my daughter from me. And he spoke out. Now he's being charged with contempt of court. I've, I've never seen or heard of anything like this. Uh, and, and my question to both of you gentlemen is, what do you see happening in the medical profession in the United States? Well, what, Dr. You're, Rodriguez? what you're talking about is something that unfortunately has happened in the past. Because one, uh, one of the problems with medicine is that uh, doctors have grown to be very, very arrogant. And uh, in the belief that we know best, we know what's good for you, and we take that to an extreme. Because uh, doing what they're doing with this child, to me, it's uh, an absolute uh, negation of what medicine should be. I mean, and, and, I, and, and I believe me, any doctor that's listening today knows, knows about this. You many times talk to people that say, Doctor, I don't feel well. And you start doing testing, and you start reviewing things, and you start doing this and the other, and you don't find anything. And I always say, tell, like particularly younger doctors, I always say, look, if a person doesn't feel well, doesn't feel well. And it is your duty to believe it, and it is your duty to find out what's happening. You cannot disregard it. Any, any of these situations simply because you think that uh, nothing is wrong or simply because the laboratory doesn't tell you anything. Because we are doctors for people, not for laboratory. We don't care, I, I don't care about laboratory testing, as, us, as useful as it is. I want to talk to the patient. I want to know what the patient feels. I want to know uh, what the patient is going through because that, that's going to give me that's going to give me the key to, to find out what's happening, and it's going to give me the, the opportunity to, to correct it. And we have, in many cases, we have illnesses where it's very hard to pinpoint uh, why that disease is happening. And you know what? My point of view always is a little bit more humble. Okay, I might not know, but I know someone that knows what's happening. So I'm going to trust him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this person and I'm going to do everything I know. I'm going to do detoxification, cleansing, nutrition, care, etc. And in many cases I see things turning around. And I might not know where the disease came from, but I'm changing things for the better. And in many of these genetic diseases, for example, we have been using uh, stem cell therapy. Stem cells have been, I mean, really a God-given miracle because they can actually change a lot of things that we might not even know about. And I have treated many people with obscure origin diseases where I either use their own blood for the treatment or I use a next of kin, a brother, a sister's blood to provide with stem cell therapy and I can see the advantage, I can see the changes, I can see how things start working. Not only stem cells but also platelets. Platelet is a tiny little thing that we have in the blood that we always thought it was only good for clotting but as we know more and more and as we use it more and more we have found that it has one of the most important keys for healing, for restoration of, of functions, for, uh, 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 I mean, uh, 
scar process for a lot of things that you can recover, uh, like in joints, for example. We're using more and more with joints, uh, like in the case of arthritis or, or damage of a joint for aging, for overweight or for whatever reason. And, and we're seeing more and more little miracles because the answer has always been within us. So our bodies have been designed to fix themselves if properly fed. Is that accurate? That's accurate, yes. You know, we always thought, because we know that originally we're only one cell. And that cell has the potential to transform itself into many cells. Not only many cells, but different types of cells. And these different types of cells have different functions. So they could become muscle, they could become bone, they could become brain, etc. And they could give uh, origin to a, hu to a whole new human being. And uh, those are what stem cells do. But we always thought that once you're born, stem cells are, are out, are, 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 are history. We, we don't have any more, we don't use them anymore, we, we don't produce them anymore. And uh, in the last, uh, I would say, 10 to 15 years, we started realizing that no, actually one of the keys, one of the foundations of life preservation is the existence of cells that can fill the gap of areas that have been damaged. That if you leave your finger, for example, when you shut the door in your car, you destroy a lot of cells. Well, what happens is that the body immediately tells the rest of the body that a real emergency has happened. And it releases a lot of substances that are going to let the body that things are, are really awfully wrong. And these substances send a message, send a chemical message to the whole body, and they start opening up a blood vessel, bringing a lot of blood to the area that has been damaged, and bringing a lot of healing elements. That's why it feels big. That's what inflammation means. You, you see tissues that are bigger than normal, hotter than normal because the temperature is going to raise, and red because there's more blood supply. But with all this blood and with all these things, what is really happening is the body is able now to deliver stem cells that are going to replace the cells that have been damaged. So little by little, we get rid of the damaged cells and then we start producing the new cells out of what? Out of stem cells. And there are many growth factors that are going to allow these stem cells to function well, and those are in the platelets. The platelet is a tiny little particle in the blood that nobody paid any attention to until very recently that is a miracle of life in itself. Actually, it can replace cartilage in a knee or in a joint. It can replace collagen in the skin of your face, it can replace uh, or, 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 or produce tissue formation in, in damaged areas. So that's, that's why they, all, they are, number one, present in blood, and second, they're always very abundant wherever there is a little emergency. So we have had them all throughout our lives. We have had them, we doctors have had them before our, our noses all the time, but it wasn't until about 15, 10 years ago that we realized that we had them, that we could use them, and they could be a great benefit, a great promise to the practice of medicine as it is now. Let's, um, <clears throat> let's go back to the phones, doctor. Uh, Bob in Idaho, welcome. Hi, guys. Yeah, I mean, the amphibians that regrow uh, appendages, <laughs> you think about all the complexity of that. Uh, 
And I think somewhere back in Genesis it says that, of course, that was a time when people lived several hundred years. I think Methuselah and Adam near a thousand. But uh, uh, it is interesting because uh, the degeneration, I don't think, is, is in the system itself. I think the degeneration is in our psyche partly, but tell that to an old guy like me with prostate problems. But <laughs> whatever else, uh, maybe I just need another 20 wives and <laughs> start with one. But uh, a question, uh, essentially, uh, uh, human blood cells, as I understand it, or cells in general do not have a nucleus. Is that correct? Are you talking about red blood cells? Yes. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus. You're right. But and, white uh, blood cells have a nucleus. Stem cells have a nucleus. Yes, and, and uh, my question being, uh, do we, I mean, essentially... Uh, microbiologists now, uh, as you think about the complexity in a single cell, uh, we don't even scratch the surface of understanding uh, how how the basics of life uh, essentially generate. They obviously have to generate from life itself, and uh, I think the public has been... Uh, use the word snow to the idea we can create life in a test tube when really we have to start out with the elements of life. Is that correct? Well, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you with different things. And let me try to put them together. Well, Come wait a sec. Oh, let's hold that, doctor. Let's pick that okay. up right after sure. this commercial break. Welcome back. Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. We're talking with Dr. Rodriguez from... Uh, the hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, you were about to say, Doctor. Okay, well, I was uh, answering some of the and, and, and talking about some of the concepts that uh, we were discussing with our listener. Uh, number one, yes, we, uh, what you're looking for is regeneration, restoration of tissue, and that's exactly what all these cells do. Now, what happens matter of how old you are or what is your age. Uh, I'm, I'm 79, thing, sir. The important thing is uh, how well are we treating our body? Because the better you treat your body, the more functional these cells are. Remember that these cells are going to be produced somewhere else, not at the site where they're needed. They're going to be produced probably in the bone marrow. Then they're going to be traveling throughout the blood and getting to the area where you need them. But during that traveling time, and once they arrive to the tissue where they're needed, they need good conditions. In other words, they need good nourishment, they need good oxygenation, they need freedom from toxics. So the more you take care of your body, the more likely these cells are going to be very useful. The, the more problems you have, and particularly is with our, cell, uh, our lifestyle, with what we eat, with what we do, etc., uh, then those cells are going to have more and more problems to go to that tissue and, and uh, do a successful grafting and do a successful job. So that's something that we have to take into consideration. So every time you are careful with the way you eat, with what you drink, every time you avoid toxics like cigarette smoke and those things, you're actually helping your body much more than what you really think. It really goes way beyond of the fact that, well, I didn't gain weight or I didn't. No, it goes way beyond. It's going to give you survival and it's going to give you quality of life and it's going to give you performance so all this is very important to, to take into consideration because the more you do it the more you help all these factors to do the job they should be able to do so I, it doesn't matter how old you are because we keep producing <laughs> stem cells up to the last day of our life can I follow up that uh, with a question there very quickly, Bob. Yeah, 
essentially most of the foods we get uh, come from these uh, lands that uh, are probably uh, uh, fertilized with what nitrogen potash phosphorus uh, essentially aren't aren't we missing a lot of the trace elements that they're essential in in uh, uh, the body's uh, uh, actual chemical needs bingo you're absolutely right uh, number one, we should lay the, the land. We should lay the land to rest every seventy years. That's what Leviticus. <laughs> we don't do it. We just do crop after crop after crop. And what happens is we deplete the land. So depleted land is depleted food. So uh, and and no wonder uh, these trace minerals are probably the number one deficiency in America. So, but in this time and age, we have supplementation. So uh, learning about supplementing all these things, being more careful about the foods that we buy, uh, going a little bit more for the organic situation where you don't have all these fertilizers and all these things is probably the best way to go. And that I would advise anybody. And people always tell me, you know, it's going to be more expensive. I know you always say, yes, it's like buying gasoline. If you buy the best fuel you can buy, it's going to be more expensive one gallon than one gallon of poor quality gasoline. Yet, you had a really nice high-end high type of car, you buy the best gasoline you can because you love that car. This is the same with our bodies on one hand. On the other hand, we waste a lot of money in buying bad food. So if we are more conscientious about all these facts and buy much better quality foods and, 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 and do a little bit of uh, administrative work, so to speak, in other words, to figure out, well, this is my budget, this is what I can buy, this is the way I can get the most out of it, that's the way to go. But let me tell you something very simple. A glass of water is always going to be cheaper than, than soda pop. Yet people buy soda pop. You see, that, that money should go on your better quality veggies, not on buying a sugary thing or, or, or a fast food place or anything like that. We should be careful about uh, what we buy, how we feed ourselves, and particularly how we feed our children. Because not only we're not feeding them right, we're teaching them bad manners. And we're teaching them things that with time are going to make them sick. I mean, we cannot do that. I mean, it's my son, it's my daughter. What most precious thing can be in my life than my children? I cannot be putting these type of things in their bodies because number one, I want them to be healthy. But number two, as a parent, I have the sacred duty to educate them, to show them the best, the, the better ways. And I think all this uh, also very, very important. Bob, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Randy, your turn. Yeah, I, I've heard of the clinic from many people uh, that are into alternative health, and uh, I saw that you had... Uh, the, the Amish people uh, come there for, uh, because they don't believe in our modern medicine, and they seem to be having a much higher uh, health rate after going there than and, uh, than the state. There was one girl where the state, I think it was in uh, Ohio or somewhere back there, that they tried to get the girl to go on chemotherapy, and they had to smuggle her out of there and got her got her healed when she she went down there but the que i guess one question i have is if you wanted to expand your clinic into say salt lake city utah you would not be able to do that would you no no we wouldn't be able to do that because, because of our government rules uh, and and we say we're we're the most freedom country in the world i don't believe that uh, yeah and, and as with many things uh, our governments like to take control of the things we do, the things we eat, the things we smoke. You see, this, this has always amazed me. Uh, this is a government that should supposed to uh, be taking care of our health. 
that should be saving lots of money if we stop smoking, yet there's not really any real effort you can see to, to stop smoking in America. There's not really, they, they, all they do is okay, we will not allow advertising, we will not allow minors to buy cereal, but there is not a real effort, a real educational effort to show how bad cigarette smoking can be for you, and they know that if we stop smoking as a nation today, again, we could be a huge saving, not, not by cutting off services, not by cutting off type of help we should be providing to people, not by closing hospitals, simply for having healthier people. Teach them to eat. Uh, make them stop smoking because you convince them, because you educate them, because you guided them to the better things. But we don't do that. So we have a huge amount of people with chronic diseases that need a lot of medical care, that consume a lot of things, Right now in America, it's considered that about 90%, just hear that, 90% of people 65 and over take some form of prescription medicine every day. Why? Because we are sick. We are ill. There are many things that we have done that have not been to our benefit. Is your the clinic part, mostly Americans? Well... I would say mostly industrialized countries because, uh, you know, pharmaceutical industry, and I, I, believe me, I hate to say this, but the, the more I see, the more I'm convinced that it's true. Pharmaceutical industry, which is very powerful, uh, all they care uh, for is selling drugs. <coughs> and, of course, the uh, present condition is it's, it's a very good market because everybody needs something for high blood pressure, for cholesterol, for heart disease, for vascular disease, for brain problems, for arthritis, for pain, for sleeping, for waking up, for antidepressants, etc. Uh, we, we see tons and tons, billions spent on, on prescription medicine that we didn't have, let's say, 100 years ago. And people were healthy and people were happy, you see. So it doesn't mean that without them, we're going to be in very bad shape. No, we were in good shape 100 years ago when we didn't have all these prescription medications. So I don't think that we really need them, or, or we don't need nearly as many pills as we take today. Well, coincidentally, so we healthy can function well. Coincidentally, 100 years ago is about the time that uh, Big Pharma took over the medical practice. There was a... Uh, Homeopathy. There were all kinds of reading some things about this, and uh, uh, you know, if, if they if you can find a natural herb that does better than a pharmaceutical, they will not put the research into a, a to an herb that they put into a pharmaceutical because they can't make money off of the herb because God gives it to us freely. Uh, this is the yep. thing that bothers me about medicine in the United States. Here is that it's all profit driven, and. Uh, it's basically designed to, uh, it's not all bad, but I, I think there's a lot of a profit motivation in it. There's and nothing it wrong with profit. Uh, it, it motivates people to invent things and to Yeah, but when, when it gets out of hand mills, it is a problem. That is the problem. When, when somebody would see you die so that they could take all of your money over a slow period of time rather than give you something to cure you, that is a problem. Fair enough. Thanks for the call. Uh, you're listening to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. Rick in Salt Lake, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Mills. It's a great program. Um, I would like to ask the doctor, uh, well, I think that a lot of the uh, people in this country suffer problems because of the vaccinations that are forced upon us, and I'd like to know what he thinks about that. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, I think vaccinations have a place in the, and, uh, and something useful about them. The problem is how many vaccinations we, should we do now? 
uh, we get so many vaccines that I, uh, believe me, I, I'm, I'm really being honest, I lost count. When I was in medical school, I remember that a child should get the triple vaccine for, for I don't know, five uh, things probably. And, uh, and then when I was in medical school, just came up a uh, polio vaccine. That's how old I am. So I, I remember that polio was added to, to the other thing. So, but, but there were probably six vaccines the child would get from birth to, let's say, six years old. Today, I really love that. Truly love that. Doctor, it has been a great pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, Rick, thank you very much for the call. 406 in the Mountain West. Welcome back to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. And I uh, want to once again welcome my guest online, Reverend uh, Lindsay Williams. Uh, Lindsay, you have not been on radio for quite some time now. Why is that? Mills, I have not done a single radio show anywhere in America or abroad for over three months. Uh, I don't know whether I... (laughs) I'm kind of on the spot here. Uh, I don't know whether I should say why or not, but I will chance it. Over three months ago, I was given some information by my elite friend that was so startling, so nearly unbelievable even by me and I know these people know what they're doing I was afraid to give it out and as a result uh, I was very glad that I could spend three weeks at the BioCare hospital in Mexico because I didn't even want to talk to anybody I, I didn't want people calling me and, as talk show hosts do and saying I'd like you to be on my show and the reason basically was I didn't want to become another John F. Kennedy, uh, and yet I knew some things that uh, I couldn't tell. What what can you share with us? Well, if you will allow me, Mills, may I back up just one moment and answer a question that was asked in the previous hour before we go into this? Certainly. We had a very unusual experience that took place here in my household. We have a family who uh, I've known for probably 20 years. They're very close to my wife and to me. Sarah is the lady's name. And for seven years' time, this lady has suffered agony. I didn't realize it because when I'd see her at her husband's office, she looked perfectly normal. And one day uh, when I was doing a show with him, her husband's also a radio talk show host as well as all of her quite a good business in Scottsdale, Arizona, and she mentioned, I am just about to drop. And I said, Sarah, what's wrong? She said, for seven years' time, U.S. doctors, United States doctors, have diagnosed me as having Lyme disease. She said, we have spent so much money on trying to find cures for my problem that she said, we actually just recently sold our house uh, took the equity out of it and had to pay the doctor's bills. Now, her husband owns a very profitable business, and this, this must have been hundreds of thousands of dollars they've spent on her trying to get her well during this period of time. And I said, Sarah, would you be willing to go with my wife and me to BioCare Hospital in Mexico? I said, we'll go with you. And, Mills, that was one of the reasons for my recent visit down there, which we just came back from. When she got there, Dr. Romero was assigned to her case. They tested her for an entire week with every test imaginable to find out what she had and come to find out that the American doctors, with all the tests and all the modern equipment, and you ask about people suffering at the hands of our hospitals and doctors now that the affordable health care bill has come in. For seven years' time, this lady has suffered horribly. And when she got there and they made all these tests, a week later they came back and said, you don't have Lyme disease at all. She said, you mean to tell me that for seven years' time, American doctors, with everything that they, all the tests, all the x-rays, 
all of the blood work, all of the drugs, everything they've given me, uppers, downers, everything imaginable. You mean to tell me I, I've been treated for the wrong thing? And they said, yes. She, they said, you have Epstein-Barr virus, which is a precursor to chronic fatigue syndrome. And they doctored her for three weeks' time intravenously, gave her uh, chelation, gave her uh, finally stem cells, and she came home saying, for the first time, I feel at least 50% better. Mills, we are suffering a horrible thing in America right now at the hands of, of this healthcare system. And it is going to be terrible. Uh, we've just seen the beginning of this. So uh, one more time, then I won't talk about it anymore. Will you please write down a phone number for me? Everyone out there in that audience, you are going to need them within the next year or two, whether you think so or not. Please write down the toll-free number of BioCare Hospital within five miles of the border of San Diego in Tijuana, Mexico. The toll-free number is 800 262 zero two one two and when you call will you please ask for Teresa I'm just trying to give you some things now that Dr. Rodriguez didn't say he had so much to say a moment ago please write down the name Teresa T-E-R-E-S-A she handles all first time people and they would like to send you a 60 page booklet at no cost to you whatsoever they'll send it to you if you'll please ask for it their 60 page booklet again the phone number is 800 262 zero two one two and ask for Teresa and I guarantee you within the next year next year or two you are going to have to have them because you cannot get that service in the United States of America now Mills I'll be glad to answer some questions as much as I am allowed to answer of what you asked me a moment ago and let me try to explain if I may I believe that you want me to tell you why I've not done any radio shows in the last three months yes uh, let, let me go back just a ways because your listening audience knows that 38 years ago I was invited I didn't pry my way in I was invited by the elite of the world uh, to be the chaplain on the trans Alaska oil pipeline and for three years time I sat with the people that you only hear about you never get to know them that you'll probably never meet the, 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 and let me assure you that there positively is, and I say this as honest as I possibly can, there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. I know. I lived with them at Prudhoe Bay in executive dorms at Arco Base for three years' time. I know that they exist. I sat across the dinner table from them, and they control the world today. Today, I am in touch with people who are in their 70s and 80s that were a part of the elite 38 years ago. Many of the younger elite have taken over now. And I still am in touch with them to the point that they tell me things. And I have never hesitated telling what they said because uh, I usually could determine where the line is. When I was given something about three months ago, I was scared to death that if I said anything, I'd cross the line. Now, I will try to give you what I can of this. First of all, now this Mills, let me say, and I hope all of you listening audience is glued to that radio, and don't you dare change it, because I may give something here that, I don't know, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Uh, there is an agenda. They know exactly what they're doing. And these people have some things planned. Uh, they have a timetable. But Mills, what I was given three months ago is in complete disagreement with nearly every newsletter writer out there today. Yeah, I know I'm really trading on some very thin eyes here right now because every newsletter on the market right now is doom and gloom and doom and gloom and doom and gloom, and I know what they're really going to do. And uh, let me try to explain it if I can. There positively is going to be a total financial collapse and a change of currencies at some point, but it is not time for it to happen yet. Mills, am I, am I making it plain enough so that people out there will understand what I'm saying? 
Yeah, and uh, to clarify it, maybe, I don't know if you can, but if you can share what you told me uh, when I was in Arizona uh, about uh, the bright, sunny, uh, smiling member of the elite and what he said, that might help them understand. Uh, yes, I'll try to the best I can. Um, there are going to be a number of events in the very near future that are going to be quite startling. But it is not the total collapse. Now, once again, let me state what I said a moment ago. There is, at some point, going to be a total financial collapse in the United States of America. America will default on its debt, but the elite are not ready to do that yet. Uh, you have a year to a year and a half before that's going to happen, maybe a little longer. Now, let me explain what a total collapse is. A total collapse, in the definition of the elite that I know, will be when the banks close and you can't get your currency, you can't get your money out, and they will ask you to come in and exchange this currency for another one. That is a total collapse. There are going to be a number of events that are going to take place before that happens. They will affect you. They will affect you drastically. Uh, but it's not a total collapse. You still have time to do what you want to do with some of your currencies, and you had better get out of paper for everything you're worth as fast as you can get out of it. Now, Mills is not paying me a penny to say what I'm about to say, and he did not ask me to say it. But, folks, you've got to get into gold and silver. You positively must get every piece of silver from Mills Crenshaw that you possibly can because my elite friend has made it known to me that the only thing that will survive when the collapse does take place is going to be gold and silver. It will survive. Controls will not be placed on it. I know some of you are thinking that they're going to do what they did a few years ago and go back and place controls on gold and silver. They do not have any plans to do that because their currency, the currency of the elite, is gold and silver and they are not going to put chains on their own currency so that they cannot use it. It will be available for use even after the collapse takes place. And the only thing that is going to survive is going to be gold and silver. You need to get every piece you possibly can within the next year to a year and a half that you've got to buy it because it will bring food to your table. In the meantime, you're going to see a number of things. Uh, first of all, you're going to see confiscation of pension plans in America. I wish I could somehow not have to say this. Uh, it's only a matter of a very short period of time until they're going to do what they did in many other countries of the world, go in and say, well, the government's in such horrible shape, we have no choice. Uh, we've got to take money out of your pension plan and they will confiscate probably 30, 40, 50 percent, who knows, of your pension plans. Uh, that means that when it's time for you to get them, it won't be there. Uh, you cannot depend on it. The 401ks, the IRAs, the federal pension plans, the military pension plans, the state pension plans, the teachers' pension plans, uh, I wish I could tell you that you're going to have them someday, but I know that, they, that, they will not be, uh, that they will not be there for you. If you are in your 50s right now, by the time you get ready for retirement, I dare to say those pension plans will be nowhere around. Uh, the, another thing that you're going to see happen in the very near future, you're going to see a global uh, currency reset. Uh, you may have heard of this. Very few people have a knowledge of what it really is. Uh, I'll try to explain it in, in a little bit of brief if I can. There are 204 nations. Now, I've been, these are the things that have been given to me by these people. There are 204 nations in the world who have already agreed with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, to, uh, to reset. Now, not revalue and not do away with but reset their currencies. Uh, when this happens, it is going to be devastating to the American dollar because they're going to reset these currencies according 
to the assets of the country. Please listen carefully to this, people. You'll see it happen right before your eyes in the very near future. And when you do, you'll look back, look back at this program and say, Mills Crenshaw had a prophet on. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a prophet, and Mills doesn't have one on today. I'm just telling you because of what they told me. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Drew to time. <laughs> sorry, to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show on K Talk. Telephone number 801 254 5855. Before you tell the next point, uh, Reverend Williams, I want to make something very, very clear to the audience. Now, you've told them that the total collapse will not occur for a year to a year and a half. And you would think that's good news. But as far as they're saying, well, I can wait a year to buy gold or buy silver, it's going up almost on a daily basis now. And when the revaluation of uh, currencies that has already been agreed to by the Inter International Monetary Fund, when that happens, it's almost too late because overnight, whatever you could have bought yesterday with a dollar bill will probably buy half of, of what it will, would have bought the day before. Is that accurate? You positively must, everyone that's listening to this show, Mills Crenshaw Show, Drive Time Today, you positively must do everything that you're going to do within the next month or two. In fact, I'd do it this week if I were you. And Mills, as I continue with my explanation here, the people will understand why they positively can not wait. Now, I, that's the reason I hesitated to even give a time frame, Mills, is because the average person will say, oh, well, Chaplain Williams has been right always in the past because that's what the elite told him. It's always happened exactly like he said it. So I've got a year to a year and a half. No, you don't. You do not have a year to a year and a half. You've got weeks. You may have days. Bill, I don't know how to say this enough so that people will get it, but let me give the next point in this so that people will understand. They positively cannot wait any longer to do what they have to do. Global currency reset. What's it going to be? Now, 204 countries have agreed that they will revalue, not, 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 no, don't use any other words now, use the word revalue their currencies, and that they will keep their currency within a 5% deferential of each other. Now, how is the IMF determining, and you know who she is, Christine Lagarde, she's the new financial head of the IMF, and she was in America just a week or so ago, and I actually talked to the person that was in the meeting with her. And uh, they have agreed, 204 countries, according to the assets of the country, their currencies will be reset. How many assets does America have? Caterpillar has moved to China. Boeing's moved to China. Your clothes are made in China. Your shoes are made in China. Uh, you, you get nearly everything that you get in, in all the stores, Walmart, Target, you name it, in, from China. How many assets does America have left? We have we, don't. we have oil, which the current president won't let us touch on federal land. Yeah. We have zero assets. We have debt. We run, it's running out our ears. We have more national debt. In the United States of America, if you took the entire world's debt all combined and totaled it together, we have more debt in the United States of America than the entire rest of the world all combined. You think Greece is in trouble? Greece is a Sunday school picnic compared to the United States of America. Now, if they reset the American currency in relation to the Chinese currency and the Japanese currency and the euro, and they reset it, and they're doing it right now, and they reset it according to the assets of those countries, where will America be? I'll tell you where it'll be. It'll be between 30 and 50% less 
than the reset that those other currencies are set to. So here's what's going to happen and why you cannot wait another day. You cannot wait even another week. You've got to do something now. Everything you're going to do, buy all that food you're going to buy, uh, do everything that your your uh, church has told you to do, uh, be sure and do what Mills is telling you to do. And I'm tell, I'm I'm uh, I'm authenticating. I, I'm I'm saying I agree with all those things that you're being told to do because let's say now that Walmart wants to restock an item after the global currency reset, which could take place any moment. They want to restock an item that's made in China. But China has assets. Oh, my goodness, have you noticed the amount of gold that China is buying lately? 100 to 120 metric tons per month China is buying because they have assets, and they are backing their currency with gold and silver. And uh, China will have plenty of assets. So the American currency will be revalued or not revalued, reset. Don't use the word revalued, reset. 30 to 50 percent less. Now, Walmart wants to restock an item. They go to China and say, I'd like to buy it after the global currency reset, and China will say, fine, I'm more than happy to sell it to you, you just pay 50 percent more because your currency now has been reset. Folks, do you realize why you can't wait even a week? It could happen any moment. They're ready for it right now. I'm not saying it will happen this week. They haven't given me a date, but it could happen almost any moment. Now, you won't be able to buy that gold and silver with the American dollar the way you can today because the price of that's going to be up in relation to the reset The gold and silver will increase in its value, and you will not have the currency to be able to purchase it. You have got to go and do something about what you're going to do right now, Mills. Agreed. I mean, the American people, if they had the slightest idea of what jeopardy they're in, now, do you realize that what what is going to happen between now and and the time that there is a complete financial collapse that the events are going to so affect your dinner table and your household that you are in grave jeopardy. We are looking at some major events just ahead in the United States of America. Now, the other day, uh, my elite friend, and I think I related this to you on the phone the other day, Mills, um, uh, I had an email and I was in contact with him, and he said, Chaplain, don't worry about anything. He said, I'm just fixing to leave Alaska. He lives in Alaska. Most of the elite have their prime homes somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Uh, They don't have their number one house that they live in most of the time in a big city. They've long since learned they've got to get out. And uh, he said, I'm going to be traveling all over the lower 48 for about the next six months to a year. And he said, uh, "Don't, don't, don't be worried about anything. He said, I kept telling you that it's not time for the collapse yet. So he said, just go ahead and do what you can do, get everything ready. And, of course, he said, I've already told you what to do. So, Mills, basically, in a nutshell, uh, I'm saying to people, if I can, and so glad that I have this opportunity to do it, you have got to make preparations for yourself financially. You positively must make preparations for your health. And that's the reason that I am so thankful that Mills had Dr. Rodriguez on from the BioCare Hospital in Mexico because You are not going to get health care in America. And if you're over 65, forget it. I mean, it's euthanasia for all practical purposes. Uh, You will not be getting health care in America. It's going to be so limited, and there'll be things that you will not be able to get. Uh, You positively must know where to go. And in most cases, you'll have to go outside the United States of America in order to get that health care. so all these are things, Mills, that I am so thankful that you even allowed us to be on your show today to at least try to express to people the urgency of taking definite precautions as soon as possible, Mills. Well, I, I think it's 
critical that uh, that people be awakened to what's coming. Caller, your first name, please. Oh, it's Susie. Welcome, Susie. Um, pension plans, does that mean federal, state, and anyone from the time they got the pension plan to the time, okay, like 20 years ago they retired, they're taking it all? Everyone's? Uh, I did not say that they were taking it all. I said that they will go into the pension plans using the guise of the fact that we are in such horrible financial condition in America that we need the money. Now, this is nothing new. Realize what they've done to Social Security. Social Security had a fund that was very well funded, and Congress went in and literally acted like thieves and took that money out of the Social Security fund to the point that today the only thing that Social Security has is what comes in every month, and that's what they pay out to the Social Security, uh, the people that they're paying. Now, they will basically do the same thing with your pension plans. They will go in, and by the way, please, uh, I, I have proof of this. You'll see it. Literally view it, if you will, and I'll tell you how in just a moment. Uh, they will say, okay, we have to have some more money. The federal government's in trouble. They'll say, okay, we are going to go into every pension plan in America. I care not whether it's private or public uh, or government. We're going into plan, and out of the main fund, we're just going to withdraw 50%. And we're going to t take it and help pay for the, the problems that we've got in the country right now. They will, like and they'll say, oh, well, don't worry about it. You won't have a thing to worry about. And, and now that is like true for next month. Yeah, See, they'll like only you... take 30, 40, 50 percent, maybe 60 percent. The people will still get their checks next month. This right. is the yeah, reason like... that they won't okay. protest. There won't be riots in the street because next month people will still get their checks. They only took 50 percent out of the operating fund. But five, ten years from now, those who are going to be depending on these pension plans, they won't be there. I gotcha. Oh, um, it's, what do you, okay, so if you make a certain amount of income, how much precious metal, sh I mean, you saying dump all your dollars into food and shelter and clothing and precious metals, is that what you're saying? Well, I what cannot advise you, you what have? to do because I, I am not a licensed financial advisor. I know. Mills can probably help you more than anybody. I will put it this way. Please write down the following for me, if you will. I just completed, I was not willing to appear on a show. Again, Mills, this is the first show I've been on and talked about this. I haven't been on a single show in three months. Uh, I did do a DVD, though, just weeks ago. I, in fact, I did two of them. One is entitled Elite Emergency Data. You must have it. I give things that I've not been willing to talk about and some things I can't even talk about on this show. Mm -hmm. Elite Emergency Data. I did a second DVD, both of these, by the way, are two hours long. Each of the DVDs are two hours long. Elite Emergency Data, I did a second one entitled Global Currency Reset. Nobody's done a DVD on this, to my knowledge. I was given this information by the powers that be, and I dared to say everything that I could say, and it's two hours long entitled Global Currency Reset. Will you please go to lindsaywilliams.net l-i-n-d-s-e-y williams dot n-e-t not dot com but dot n-e-t you'll find both of those DVDs there and they tell you things that you won't get out of any financial newsletter and things I haven't been willing to say and still can't say some of them on shows or please take down a toll free number you can call during office hours in central time the number is 888 seven nine nine six one 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 again that's eight 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 toll free eight 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 seven nine nine six one 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 and into my give everything I was I could give here's what they did back three months ago when I was told this uh, my friend said I swear you to secrecy and he said there are certain things that I've told you just to help protect your own family that he said, you don't dare give out to anybody. And I said, what things are they? And he told me. 
he also told me some other things that I could say. And those are the things that I put in Global Currency Reset, are the things that, folks, you have to understand, uh, there's jeopardy in dealing with these elite. I, I wish I could help you realize that being in touch with them is not the most pleasant thing in the world. I don't really enjoy getting with one of these people on the telephone and talking to them for an hour. You think, oh, my goodness, Lindsay, you, you must really be something to be able to get up there and talk with one of these people for 30 minutes to an hour. Not on your life. Sometimes it's excruciating for me to even be on the phone and have to talk about this kind of stuff. And they don't tell me things I like necessarily either. And you'll have to understand that two times over the past 38 years, I have been threatened. Uh, I mean, severely threatened. And because I said too much. And in order to be able to tell you some things, you wouldn't even know the global currency reset was going to take place and that there was 204 countries and that they would keep them within a 5% deferential and that the American currency is going to revalue by 30%. You wouldn't know any of this if the elite had not confided into me with a lot of things. You know, and so as Michael, a result, I give you everything I can in order to help you. But there are certain things that I would jeopardize my future. Uh, you know what you know who Michael Savage is? So Mills, this is where it stands. You know who Michael Savage is? I listen to him quite often. Talk he's a great man. Yeah, he's, he's warning everybody, too, so is Glenn Beck. They've been warning him about... Yeah, it's coming, and, and, and he, was, he had a show today, and he was talking about the thievery going on in San Francisco with uh, art, artwork, things disappearing, yep. going into people's private homes, once Feinstein, and this is a felony, and he wants to get the uh, FBI on it. You know, I mean, that, that's Michael Savage, but, uh, you know, he, you know let's, why is San Francisco getting a pass here in California? And then I heard that they want to divide California up now into different like in countries that was on the news I mean I, I guess apparently we've been uh, this has all been by design <laughs> to take America to its knees well you have to understand that there is a new world order that was announced by Daddy Bush mm -hmm. uh, over 20 years ago mm -hmm, I saw and they it. have been working on, on the carrying out of this plan now for all of mm -hmm. these years Mm -hmm. I saw it on tape on one of the uh, Alex Jones tapes. Yeah, yes. I know. It's and amazing. This is nothing okay. new. They've been working on this for years and years. Mm -hmm. And you've been hearing about it right here on the Mills Crenshaw show day after day after day. Mm -hmm. Mills is telling you the truth and, and believe those things that you might say, oh, my goodness, that sounds like fantasy. No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. for real. And we are going to face a new world order. Now, keep in mind two things. Number one, the New World Order is a reality according to the elite. Secondly, the New World Order was talked about in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, back over 2,000 years ago. We were told it would happen someday. So don't be surprised. I understand. In Revelation. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank, thank you, Susie. Appreciate the call. 801-254-5855. What a, I, I've got to tell you, Lindsay, well, I'll, I'll mention this when we come back. You're listening to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show on KTOK. Welcome back, Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. Telephone number 801-254-5855. My guest is Reverend Lindsay Williams. Lindsay, I am so frustrated. I have for months now been pleading with people to do exactly what you've been talking about. The fact is that there is a licensed company right here in Salt Lake. I have no connection with them. I don't make a penny off of what they do. But we are a registered dealer with this company and they are licensed to set up self-directed IRAs. And the cost is next to nothing. It's like $35 to set up a, a self-directed IRA. They handle all the paperwork. They get the funds transferred. And uh, then they handle all of the legal requirements. So this is perfectly legitimate. 
but it takes time. It takes two weeks to three weeks to get all the paperwork done and to get the funds transferred and get the, fun, the uh, precious metals set up in your account at Brinks. And only two of all of my listeners, I've talked to, I've talked to scores, but only two have actually gone through that process. And I, I know it's a lot of people who are just saying, wow, gee, I've got to do this, but I'll, I'll just put it off. And every day now, I'm seeing an upward trend in the cost of precious metals. And it, it scares the heck out of me. Well, Mills, you're exactly right. And why people don't take caution and don't take uh, action, immediately you need to do something. You, you cannot wait. The elite have a timetable. I know much of that timetable. And there are things that you positively must do. Folks, let me stress to every person out there in Mills listening audience right now, you positively must do what Mills just said if you want to spare your assets. And I testify personally from what I have heard from these people that if you don't take Mills Crenshaw's advice right now, uh, you're going to lose most of it. And that's, I mean, it, it, people think, uh, well, look, I'll just get my money out of the bank and stuff it in a mattress. That doesn't save anything. It's, it's going to still lose half or uh, nearly half of its value. People can stuff between the mattress everything they want to stuff. But when the global currency reset takes place, that currency is going to be reset in its value. Okay, I'm going to go a step further. Bear with me. Whenever the global currency reset takes place, the banks are not going to be closed. They will not ask you to bring your currency in and exchange it for another currency. They are merely going to reset it according to the currencies of these 204 countries. And when that reset takes place, it's going to be worth 30 to 40, maybe 50 percent less, depending on what country the product is bought from. Now, stuff it between the mattress all the way, all as much as you wish, you will still lose that 30, 40, or 50 percent, even if it's between the mattress. There are things that you positively must do, otherwise you will lose it. Now, gold and silver will more than likely escalate very rapidly, in fact, may instantaneously, as off the global currency reset, so I have been warned that gold may go up in accordance with the revaluing of the dollar to the point that if, I'm not saying it'll happen in 24 hours, but it may. 24 hours later, you may have to pay 30, 40, 50 percent more for that identical same precious metal than you're paying today. And what you've got in the 401k and the IRA, if you want to go to the store and buy something, you're going to pay 30, 40, 50 percent more after 30, 60 to 90 days when the company has to buy it again from China or India or Japan. So you think what they want is they don't want you to riot. I hope you're catching this. The elite do not want you in the streets rioting. They are going to do this in such a manner as to keep you from getting out there and protesting publicly until the point that you've already lost it. Uh, the last thing in the world they want is riots. Therefore, whenever the global currency reset takes place, it may be 30 to 60 to 90 days before that product is going up that much because it has to be bought from that country that charges that reset value it is there to that point. Uh, your pension funds, as the lady just kited a moment ago, I love that question she asked, and then she said, oh my goodness, I finally understand it. They will, with, they will take out of that pension fund 40 to 50 percent, not, not next month's paycheck. I'm not talking about that. They'll withdraw it from the general fund of the pension fund. And next month, you'll still get your check just like always. You'll still get your Social Security check. You'll still get your pension fund check, people who are getting them right now. But a while down the line, when that main fund runs out because they have subtracted or withdrawn 30 to 40 to 50 percent or more from it, 
then they're going to say, oh, my goodness, the pension funds run out of money. We can't send it to you anymore like we thought we could. Well, by that time, you'll be so poor you won't be able to get out on the streets and ride anyway. They don't want a public demonstration of angry people, and they're going to pull the plug the way that they want to do it according to their new world order plans. And, Bill, it would be much better if they would just go ahead and let the whole collapse take place tomorrow morning. It would be so much easier for all of us if they would just do it and get it over with but they're not going to. Understand. Why do you think they're not? They don't want riots. They don't they want to bring in the new world order their way according to their rules and they want you to do exactly what you're doing right now. Just sit back and take it, go along with it, uh, not protest. I'll worry about it tomorrow, right? Worry about it tomorrow. Just push the can down the road a little ways and worry about it later. Uh, this is exactly what they want, and this is their plan. John, welcome got, to K-Talk. Yeah, two questions. One, uh, when they RV all these currencies, what is that RV going to be based on? Will it be based on GDP? or That's my first question. Assets. And we don't have any. The global currency reset will be based on the assets of the country as they have already been determined, not by the United States government, not by the president, not by the Congress, but is determined by the International Monetary Fund, who is the one who has gotten these 204 countries to agree with the reset of their currency and they will determine what the assets of the country are whereby they reset the currency. Oh, okay. Then my second question is, just out of curiosity, what, what do you think is going to happen in the Ukraine? Uh, the, the question again, Mills, was what now? What's going to happen in uh, Ukraine, you know, with these current protests? Do you think that... Well, I'm, I know about the United States of America. Very seldom do any of these people talk with me about what is going to happen in foreign countries. Uh, they oftentimes will talk to me about what's happening in China. And please get my prognosis as to what they told me about China in my DVD, which is entitled Elite Emergency Data. And I told you some things in that that they told me about China that is will just really, you must know it. I mean, it'd be, it will help increase your understanding of the global situation. But they usually talk about the United States of America, so I really don't know too much about countries like the Ukraine. Okay, hey, thanks for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Richard, welcome. Hey, how are we doing? Good. One minute. One quick comment and question it might be a comment, it might be a question, but I uh, have a family member that is in the professional family of the elite, and according to them, uh, there's nothing to worry about. She works for the FDIC. Uh, there's nothing to worry about unless she tells us. Uh, so I just throw that in a box of chocolates and see what you think about that. Okay, nothing to worry about in relation to what now? The money, the money losing its value. <clears throat> I, I take the more heat on what you're saying. I just, I wonder what the FDIC would, would know about any of If the money's going to well, I'm quite, value I'm quite sure they're aware of what's going on. Uh, uh, I know that they know what the IMF is doing. Wouldn't they? And have? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, you think they'd, they'd share with their family members, you know, if they, if they really knew something was coming down. Oh, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? There's not a congressman out there that's going to lose anything through this. They already know what's going on. The president already knows what's going on. You really think so? Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I know they do. Uh, yeah. I was talking with one of them the other day who actually was in the meeting that some of the big bankers had with the president and he told me something that was said which I can't repeat over the air 
mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're very aware. In fact, there are certain people in America who are making fortunes out of this. I'll bet. <laughs> Gee, uh, we just saw that George Soros is betting against the dollar the way he bet against uh, the pound sterling. Does that indicate anything to you? Yeah, it well, positively. Out. Yeah, they they know the the very top. They know what's going on. They know exactly what's going to happen, and most of them know much better than I do when it's going to happen because I don't know the exact date. But some of them even know the exact date. So as a result, they have gotten out of the dollar and gotten into another currency because they know which currency is going to be chosen as the reserve currency of the world. Well, that's and interesting all- because um, one bit of information I was able to glean from a separate source was that the oil will no longer be bought in dollars. Oil and gold will both, according to this source, be purchased with special drawing rights and the only source for the special drawing rights is the International Monetary Fund. Yeah, so you got one one of the 204 currencies and I do not know which one it was, it is. I wish I did. Uh, so, so I could so make a fortune yeah. like a lot of people are making out there right now. One of these 204 currencies will be chosen as the reserve currency of the world, and so it will be backed by gold. So if you're holding on to a dong or euro, like, possibility if, they, if they're one of them, well, that would be a good currency to hold, but you, you got one or two. If you, if you knew, yeah, if you knew what currency it is that will be chosen, they've already chosen it. Yeah. Just that I don't know. But, uh, Richard, think about this. There are 204 currencies involved in this scheme. Only yeah. one of them will be the reserve currency. You can get better odds than that in Vegas. Well, I do. I, I went up and got a lottery ticket. I figured I had better chances of winning on that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my input. I appreciate it. Good show. Uh, I'll keep listening, and uh, that's all i got to say about that. Thanks very much. Lance, welcome. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering about the. Uh, uh, oh, this money. is Randy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. This is about the. If we have a devaluation, I, they've been trying to devalue the dollar anyway because uh, earlier Lindsay said that we were going to start seeing industry coming back to the United States. Well, uh, a, a devalued currency would facilitate that. It would. Uh, it would cause that we would start making more stuff. Here and that might be the the, the method that they use to accomplish that. So I, I I don't see it being all bad. What what do you say to that? Okay, please do not use the word devaluation. That is not what the global currency reset is. It is a reset of currencies. It is not a devaluation, even though it may appear to be a devaluation because the purchasing power of the American dollar goes down. Uh, in order to think in the proper terms. You know, it's very difficult to think like the elite think. Uh, it took me years of talking with these people, living with them for three years' time, and talking to them on the phone many times. Lindsay, order- let's continue this on the other side. We've got a break right now for Network News. We will continue this conversation. I assume you can stay with us? Yes, be glad to. Outstanding. Uh, I appreciate, Randy, your call and that question. Lance, you will be first up when we come back from Top of the Hour News. You're listening to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show on KTALK. 506 in the Mountain West, welcome back to Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show. Lance has been waiting. We're going to go to Lance in a minute. But before I go to Lance and my continuing online guest, Dr. Um, I, I'm sorry, I've promoted you. Reverend Lindsay Williams, uh, a little housekeeping. We've been talking about the essential need for you to take some steps to get prepared for what's coming. And you really are running out of time. Even though the total collapse may not be for a year, year and a half, the, uh, the restructuring, the revaluation uh, or resetting of the dollar 
could happen tomorrow. Nobody knows. But it's imminent. And the minute that happens, your dollars, whether they're in a 401k, in your bank account, or under your mattress, they're going to be worth anywhere from 30 to 50% less instantly. If you are interested in changing your IRA from paper assets into a self-directed precious metals IRA, I'm going to give you a very simple way to do it. Grab something that you can write on and something you can write with. I'm going to give you two alternatives. And the same is true if you just want to buy some precious metals uh, and take immediate possession. In either case, you can call me and leave your phone number slowly twice on my cell phone. Now, it's going to just ring and it will go to the answering service. Leave your name and your phone number slowly, clearly, twice. Or you can send me an email and I will, by return email, when I get home tonight, after I'm teaching a self-defense class tonight, so it'll be later when I send this to you. But don't put it off. I had someone yesterday who said he was going to send me an email, and I had all the material ready to send him. The, his email never came. First, the phone number to call. And remember, you're going to leave your name and phone number slowly twice or you can leave your email slowly twice together with your name. Here's the phone number. It's 801-706-2256. Again, 801-706-2256. If you wish to send me the email, here is the email address. Mills Crenshaw as one word, M-I-L-L-S, C R E N S H A W dot C S H at Gmail dot com. So it's Mills Crenshaw dot C S H at Gmail dot com. Lance, thank you for waiting. You're on with uh, Reverend Lindsay Williams. I was just going to ask the question, uh, if, you know, we rush to get gold and silver, what's to prevent the government from just taking it or seizing whatever repository you put it in? A number of years ago, um, before Mr. Ken Fromm passed away, passed away about a year and a half ago, he was the elite of the elite. And before he passed away, one time we were on the phone and in the course of one of the conversations, someone said, do you know what the currency of the elite is? And I said, no, and at the time I didn't. Uh, they said the currency of the elite is gold and silver. They are not going to touch their currency. They are not going to confiscate their currency. They are not going to, uh, they're, not, they're not going to put restrictions on their currency. And so I am told the only thing that you will have free reign to use will be gold and silver. And one more point with that, Lance. Utah is one of the states, and there are at least 24 other states that have made gold and silver legal tender. But they, that doesn't prevent the government from... Yes, saying, it does, because if it's legal tender, they can't seize it. Uh, how did how, how did they get away with uh, asking you to turn in your gold in the past when they did that? Because they just did it, and some foolish people did it. Not many, by the way. The idea that everybody turned in their gold and silver w is a joke. It didn't that happen. That didn't happen. Oh, okay. And only a fool would do so. Well, if they made it illegal somehow, then you would have a tough time using it in public for any. Well, kind it was of illegal for thing. Jews to have gold, silver, or jewels, but they sewed it into their clothing, didn't they? Right. Uh, not only that, but go across the border into Canada, go across the border into Mexico, 
<laughs> they would gladly take your gold in exchange for whatever currency there is. Yep. But it won't happen. The elite are not going to touch their own currency. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 801-254-5855. Um, Lindsay, just before the break, you started to say something, and I asked you to hold it over. What was that? Some The question had come up about the elite, and I was correcting a phrase. It is a global currency reset, and the word devaluation had been used, and I said don't use that because it's not correct. And I went into the fact that to understand the mindset of the elite was very difficult for me. Uh, I was brought up as a young man in a, in a fine Christian home. I had a wonderful mother and dad. They loved the Lord, loved me, and I was taught biblical principles of honesty and decency. And when I finally came in contact with the elite during those three years I lived with them, I had a difficult time realizing that there could be any such human beings on the face of the earth that thought in such dastardly manners. And I had a difficult time understanding their thinking. When, only when you learn to think in their vernacular, can you understand the depth of what they're doing. And so I suggested that you use the word reset only rather than the word devaluation or revaluation, because actually you have to understand that there are many ramifications to the word reset. And when you learn just begin right now programming your mind to think like these people think. And you'll, you'll learn a lot of that from my DVDs when you get them. But learn to think like they think. It will be much easier for you to understand what the New World Order is doing. I think that's a very important distinction. Oh, by the way, Ann Coulter says there's a new Obama promise. If you like your life, you can keep it. <clears throat> Jeff, welcome. You're on K-Talk. Yes. Um, I need that toll-free number of, to get those DVDs. I was driving, and now I'm, I'm at, at my house. Now i got something to write with. And by the way... Well, I, 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 I want to congratulate you. Don't ever write while you're driving. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much That's for right. calling back when you got home, because I might have been that person out there on the road that was facing you when you were driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the toll-free number is 888-799-6111. Again, toll-free, and you'll talk with an American operator, by the way. Uh, we believe in, in Americans handling our calls. 888-799-6111, and you need to call during central time between 9 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. Okay, you said seven what? Eight 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 eight. And then yeah. and then what? Seven seven nine nine six one one one. Oh man, now I got it. Good. I'm not gonna throw that thing away. Hey, by the way, I one time I'm with my kids. My wife said, "Why you said that?" I said, "Whoopie do." I'm giving you an example. If you know something, just let the cat out of the bag. And if the big guys come to you and say, why did you say that? So whoop, I accidentally said something, and maybe they may take it and run with it, and it may do some good. Because you say some things you can't tell us, right? Isn't that right? Well, uh, I say everything I possibly can say. And as okay. a result, I'm able to help millions of people. Oh, good. Those uh, DVDs, do they cost a lot? Well, you call them. I don't think you'll find that it costs a lot at all. It costs a fraction of what you would, uh, well, it, it, we keep them as reasonable as we possibly can. You just call, they'll give you the price. Okay. Or you can go on to williams.net and you can see it also. Okay, I, I bought something through Alex Jones, the Obama Deception. I learned so much from that, and I thought, man, and I, I, I record it and give it to other people. Well, that's true with my DVDs also. I do not copyright my DVDs. I do not copyright them. 
and I ask you to copy them and give them to everybody you possibly can. Okay. Thanks for telling me that. Appreciate your call. Mm -hmm. 801-254-5855. Jeff, welcome. Hello? Okay, he's gone. One of the things that comes to my mind, uh, Lindsay, is that is it a fact that a disproportionate number of the elite are in the oil business? Oh, positively. In fact, the only ones that I knew, now there are many that are not in the oil business, but the ones that I knew were the ones that were in the oil business. Um, So I I didn't meet the people like Henry Kissinger and different ones like that because they're more into other things. But uh, yes, the, a larger number of them are in the oil business. That's where the money is. Remember, you have a product here that you have to go back and buy. Once you use it, you can't reuse it again. And they really have it made. The oil business uh, is the thing to be in. That's what the elite are involved in, most of them. And, uh, well, I, you know, that would take us into the subject of Iraq and what they did there, all about oil. Uh, you can just on and on and on. Oil is the number one product out there for the elite. And that's what gives them control. Oh, definitely. Um, really, when you come down to it, currency is worthless. Uh, oil is the standard currency of the world when you come down to it. Uh, it controls everything else. And really, if I could think in terms of the elite I wouldn't think in terms of dollars and cents or rubles or pounds or yen. I wouldn't think in those terms at all. I'd think in terms of oil. Ken, welcome. Yes, I just have a question in reference to uh, purchasing silver and gold. Go right ahead. Uh, The question is, uh, the money that you take out of savings for the purchase of that gold, somebody's uh, selling that gold for a profit, and uh, obviously they want the cash or the currency more than the gold, otherwise they wouldn't sell it to you. Well, like what you forget is that it costs money to produce the uh, precious metals. It costs more money to uh, pay the cost of coinage, the actual physical manufacture, and if you make a tiny profit on each transaction, it enables you to increase your own personal stock. But the time okay. will but the time will come when the paper will be valueless and and only the the uh, residual precious metals will be the thing that has value. Precious metals are a store of wealth. Don't think about them as a profit. Uh, something to make profit on. Consider store of wealth. Outstanding point, and I'll elaborate on that when we come back. Thanks for that call, Ken. 801-254-5855. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Drive Time Live. You're listening to the Mills Crenshaw Show. Telephone number 801-254-5855. Reverend Lindsay Williams is my guest. And uh, just at the break, um, Reverend Williams was making a very profound statement. He said, don't think of precious metals as uh, making a huge profit. Think of it in terms of storing your wealth. And that is a perfect analogy. Let me, let me give you a concrete example. In 1896, I'm sorry, yeah, 1896, a $20 gold piece would buy two good men's suits. You could actually buy a suit a suit as cheaply as 30 bucks. I'm sorry, as th- as a three dollars. Uh, discriminating buyers might go to Brooks Brothers and get a really top level suit, and there they might pay. 20 to $30 for one suit. But a high quality, good man suit could be obtained for 10 bucks. So at 
at that time, 1896, you could buy two good men's suits for a $20 gold piece. A Singer's sewing machine sold for $9. That helps put the whole thing in perspective. What would you pay? 300, 400 bucks now for a good Singer sewing machine right now? And uh, today, a $20 gold piece will stool, still buy two good men's suits because a good quality men's suit's gonna be 650 to 700 bucks. Yeah, you can buy them for as cheap as $100. That's like buying a $3 men's suit back in 1896. But a quality suit is gonna be six, 700 bucks. And a $20 gold piece will still buy two quality men's suits. So by buying precious metals, you're not going to get rich. You're just going to hold on to what you've got because everybody else's dollar is going to shrink in what it will buy and it is going to shrink dramatically. Uh, any comment on that, uh, Reverend Williams? The Federal Reserve note that you have stuffed between the mattress, all the money that you have in your bank account in your local bank is not a store of wealth. It is a loss of wealth. They can do anything they want to with it anytime they wish. The price of things can go up and down according to a global currency reset. But that is not true of gold and silver because when the global currency reset takes place, the gold and silver will go up proportionately to the reset of the American dollar when you have to use dollars to purchase it. So don't think that you're saving your money by stuffing it between the mattress. Quite to the contrary. I beg, I plead, I wish I could just come and sit down in your home right now and reason with you as to why you positively must do whatever you're going to do as quickly as possible within days or weeks because of the different things that they have planned. Well said. Um, okay, let's uh, go right back to the phone. Rick in Salt Lake, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'd like to ask Mr. Uh, Mr. Williams, or Reverend Williams, uh, when they collapse the economy, it's going to be a worldwide collapse, correct? Uh, now, let me clarify so that you understand their thinking. Now, when I talk about a collapse, I'm talking about a collapse of the American dollar. Yeah. There may be other currencies in the world that collapse before the American dollar will. I have been told that more than likely the euro will collapse before the American dollar. You positively must understand what's happening in China. Oh, my goodness, the way the elite have talked to me about China. And the only way I knew to do it was show pictures of it. And that's what I did in my Elite Emergency Data DVD. Now, there are other currencies that will probably collapse before the American dollar does. So I deal mainly with what they've told me about the dollar. So I think when you're thinking of a, of a financial collapse, let's think in terms of the day that the elite closed the America, or shut the American banks down and tell you that the money you've lost in them, that you either lost it or you must bring in those dollars to exchange them for other currency. Well, the way that I see it, uh, and I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, there's going to be so many people after two weeks of the collapse starving because they don't have food and they won't be getting the assistance, I'm sure, um, that it's going to be dangerous for a person to leave their house after about two weeks. And I would imagine that after about two months, there's going to be millions of people that have, will have died from starvation or um, you know, being mugged or killed or whatever, you know, because I think it'll be total chaos. Rick, I'm glad you brought that up because there is one other bit of housekeeping I need to take care of. Tonight, I'm teaching uh, another section of the uh, self-defense cl training class, as I will on Saturday. But a week from this Saturday, not this Saturday, but the following week, I'm going to open up perhaps the last new self-defense class that I'm going to teach. There aren't many 
instructors with my years of experience or my rank available in the United States. And of those, I don't know any of them that are teaching a condensed self-defense class other than myself. If you want you and your family or any of your family members to be part of that new class, you need to call me, 801-706-2256. I've got an opening for 10. All right. um, in regards to, like, the food supply will pretty much uh, dry up, won't it? And the same with, uh, like, gasoline, correct? I mean, like, if it's not going to be elite easy to go... Why? If the elite have their way, if they're able to do this the way that they want, want to do it, it's not going to be near as chaotic as you're trying to describe. They have a number of things that they're going to put in place first in order to be able to make it possible for them to make this transition uh, without any more riots than they possibly have to have. They do not want riots. Let me stress again. The elite do not want the American people rioting in the streets, and they have a number of things they're going to put into force. This one of them said to me one day. He said, Chaplain, there's not going to be any shortage of food on the grocery store shelves. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, whenever this comes down to it, I said, what do you mean it's not going to be? He said, Chaplain, we have the ability to bring in food from anywhere in the world. And he said, regardless of what happens in America, he said, the only problem is going to be having the ability to have something to purchase that food with. They said they are going to keep the grocery store shelves full. I hope you're hearing this. Okay. They're going to keep the grocery store shelves full. And they do not want riots, and you're going in there breaking into those grocery stores. And they'll do everything in their power to make it possible for you to have something to be able to purchase something with, even if it's much less than what you have right now because they don't want riots. They don't want a total breakdown in the structure of the country. They only want a transition from where we are right now to what they want their new world order to be. So it may not be exactly as you are envisioning it, and, and there's some things I haven't even told me about that more than likely they'll be doing prior to that time in order to make it possible for people to make a transition. They may even give you advance notice of uh, converting your currency into the new currency for price. I'd, I'd like to ask the, the Reverend if, if he knows that if the elite have underground bunkers that they will hide in when things get really bad. You know, I cannot get them to talk about this. <laughs> I wish I could. There are some subjects that when I try to talk about it, they just literally cut me off. And, and I've learned not to push the issue because then they don't want to talk about other things either. And that's one subject that I wish I had an answer to. Okay. Hey, well, thanks a lot. My Thank guess you. They do have them, otherwise they would. Yeah, probably a safe guess. Jerry, your turn. Welcome. Hi there, Mills. Um, when I was uh, in my teens back in the 70s, I worked for, when I first started working, like $1.65 an hour. And that was when uh, money was backed by silver and gold. Well, if I took the wage today and uh, was making a dollar sixty-five an hour at the current silver prices, I'd be making thirty-three dollars an hour in in uh, purchasing power. If I was to be making a dollar sixty-five an hour today, it would be comparable to thirty-three dollars an hour in silver. Interesting. So, by going off the gold standard, we have uh, lost our purchasing power, and also, <clears throat> um, let's see what else they're going to say about that. Um, can't remember. I think that was most of it right there. So, but it's a good point. Yeah. So uh, when we went off the gold standard, then oh, here's the other part. When we have uh, increased the currency or the national debt it reminds me of me and my son when we went to Kinko's and we photocopied a bunch more money so that we'd have more money in the game that's <laughs> monopoly well when we had more money we could buy more things but the things were more expensive and so by increasing the money supply it does nothing more than increase 
inflation and decrease our purchasing power even more. And that was my comments for today. I'll listen. Well and, said. Uh, Thank you. Say. Thank you. Dale, your turn. Howdy. Go right yeah. ahead, Dale. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I, I've heard you say that you, okay, buy $1,000 worth of silver. Then when you want to buy something, you just go change it for American money. No, you don't have to. The currency. Well, I put the barter system aside. Well, no, I'm not talking about. Wait, 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 Dale. This is important for everybody to hear because you've raised a good point. Utah is one of the states. I forget the total number. I know it's at least 24 other states have made gold and silver legal tender. You don't have to change it for anything. You can pay your bills right now in the state of Utah, including your taxes or car payments or house payments. You can pay it in gold or silver, and they have to take it because it has been declared legal tender. Okay, I understand that, but there is a net value increase in terms of the current currency. So you're going to net profits from the increased value of gold and silver. Are those increase in values taxable? They're not increases. They well, if, I, if I buy it for $5 and sell it for 20 which I've done for silver, uh, I didn't claim it because I didn't think you had to, but that was a $15,000 net gain in money in my pocket. Not really, because... Not consider income? No, because the, the point is what it would purchase was exactly the same. Well, not in those three years that the silver went from like 12 to 45. Well... I, I, I realized $15,000 in the basic short term, which was a lot more than inflation or anything else for the silver at the time when it made that big run about four years ago. Well, one, th there are two things I never do. I do not give tax advice and I do not give financial advice. I answer the questions to the best of my ability and help people understand what um, protecting their assets amounts to Oh. And okay, I understand that. I, I, I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood what I heard because you said you take your silver in or gold, you give it to the coin dealer, he gives you whatever it's worth, and you walk away with the cash in hand. Now, there's going to be a net increase or loss. Is that declarable as income? I am not a tax okay. expert, I can't okay. give you that I advice, would, but. Uh, but the import, important from. thing to remember, Dale, is you do not have to s go through any third party. You have a legal right, and they have a legal responsibility to accept gold and silver in payment of any debt. It is legal tender in the state of Utah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. you have a good day. And 801-254-5855. Reverend Williams, we we live in very interesting times. Oh, it's marvelous. You know, I am so glad I'm living today, Mills. You know, if God had given me a choice, he didn't, of course, but if God had given me a choice as to any time throughout all of history that I wanted to live, I would have chosen right now. I think it's the most exciting time on the face of this earth. Now, no man knows the day nor the hour. That's a given. But what is your thought? Are we close to the time of the return? Oh, positively. I think we're right here. Um, keep in mind something. As a young man, I went to Bible college, graduated seven years of college, Bible college, and then college got a bachelor's degree. I've studied the Word of God all of my life. I accepted the call to the ministry at 18 years of age, and that's all I've ever done, is pastor churches, be a missionary, you know, on and on you go. And of all of the study of the scriptures that I've done, read through the Bible many, many times, preached many, many sermons, I 
according to my interpretation of the scriptures, believe that we are in the immediate, the possibility. I said the possibility. I am not giving a date. I said in the immediate, I believe that we are in the possibility of the return of Jesus Christ. I sometimes have people say that uh, they consider Barack Obama to be the Antichrist. And I quite often will say, um, I don't know that he's the Antichrist, but he does give a marvelous imitation. Uh, what I know from the Antichrist from the Bible, Barack Obama is probably an angel compared to what the Antichrist is going to be. <laughs> I, I have to look and see what that man is going to do from the book of Revelation. It's so interesting that uh, in my family devotions, our family has been reading the book of Revelation for the last few weeks. And what the Antichrist is going to do, oh, Barack Obama couldn't even fill up one of his, his toes, much less his shoes. Uh, we are living in some very, very exciting times. And... I'm going to go a step further. Back about two years ago, I produced a DVD entitled 2012, The Beginning of the End. And in it, I told that I had been in communication with one of my elite friends, and they'd indicated that they actually expected a divine event of some kind. I'm going to go a step further. Uh, I have had numerous emails from my elite friend within the past few months, in which he, uh, how should I say, he alluded to the possibility that the elite are expecting a divine event of some type to take place in the very near future. Uh, Hold that thought. I want to hear more when we come back. Welcome back. 543 in the Mountain West. Telephone number 801-254-5855. Uh, Reverend Williams, what you've just said is one of the most striking comments of all. Tell us more. Back about four, maybe five years ago, I was on the phone with one of the elite of the elite. And he mentioned to me a subject. Uh, he used a phrase. They used a lot of phrases that I've learned to listen to their buzzwords. And he called it devil's messiah. Now, you won't hear this. You'll never hear this on the national news unless you're talking to one of them personally and happen to know their buzzwords. It wouldn't mean a thing. And it fascinated me so much. I asked him, I said, what are you talking about? He said, and he went on to describe, this is not the Antichrist, but instead it is the elite's religious program or the elite's religion, however you'd like to describe it. And, and that shape takes me to different forms. And he went on to explain how they were going to remove the Bible from uh, American life, how they were going to take away uh, the Bible from the schools, which they've done, and replace it with evolution and everything else imaginable, humanism and all of that. And he said how they were going to affect the churches and the Christian schools. And they went on and on and on to tell me how that this devil's messiah program of the elite was going to change religion in America as we know it today, and they have done a marvelous job of doing this. Now, these people, they know good and well that there is a being out there that they're going to have to contend with someday. Uh, they, they think they're God, but they really aren't, and they know good and well that there's something else, even though they don't know who it is. Some of them do and some of them don't. Uh, but they are expecting a divine event of some type in the very next future and in the near future they're not quite sure what it is and how it will manifest itself and they have no way of preparing against it either for or against it uh, therefore they know that they're limited to a certain point but Mills let me assure you that some of the conversations I've had and some of the emails I've had just recently in fact I sent an email the other day to one of my elite friends talking about uh, a certain item that had been stated by a minister of the gospel and how he thought this thing would be happening shortly. And I sent it to my elite friend, and he replied back and said, very well could be. 
uh, and they are expecting some sort of divine intervention or divine action in the very near future. And I think I can pretty much say to everyone out there in your listening audience today, the Bible says that the heavens are for signs and seasons and days and years. And what is the first thing it says there in the book of Genesis? It says that the heavens are for signs. Now, it says seasons, days, and years also. The first thing it says, and the most important item of all those things listed is for signs. You may very well begin to see some signs. Uh, The elite are expecting them in the not-too-distant future. Well, we just had a flyby by a huge asteroid 300 uh, meters long. Uh, Yeah, 300 meters long. Uh, And that was, what, just last night or the night before? A near miss? I think we're going to see a lot of this. Uh, Mel, welcome for your call. One moment. Hi, Vinzi. Nice to hear from you. Go ahead, Mel. Uh, earlier, Vinzi was talking about how oil plays Are you on a speakerphone? How's that? Uh, not much better. Okay, that's better. Oh, yeah, much better. These high-tech phones, you know, old people can't use them. So, Lindsay, earlier you'd mentioned about the involvement of oil in the invasion of Iraq. And I was wondering if you could uh, give us a few details on that. That's what Iraq was all about. It wasn't about Saddam Hussein at all. Uh, That was completely secondary. And, of course, we could use the excuse that there were um, weapons of mass destruction there. There were no weapons of mass destruction, and later... Our President Bush admitted to it. Uh, it was all about oil, still is about oil, and uh, they're the second largest, they have the second largest oil field, I understand, on the face of the earth. Right now, you, do you understand that Mills has always claimed that oil had nothing to do with it and that there actually were WMDs there, but they were all hidden, and President Bush lied when he claimed there were none? know that that was the case, and Mills, maybe you could lend some uh, knowledge on that. Well, I, all I know is uh, the stories that I saw on the internet and the satellite photos of Russian trucks taking weapons uh, from the storehouses in uh, Iraq up the road to Syria. And uh, that Syrian rebels, again on the internet, traced them to their ultimate destination, named the names of the families uh, who were responsible for that transfer, and uh, that they gave to uh, U.S. authorities the location of the, uh, the caches of weapons of mass destruction that were transferred into Syria. We do know that uh, Saddam Hussein uh, used chemical weapons on his own people, at least on the Kurdish portion of his people, and uh, killed entire communities using those weapons of mass destruction. And the idea that suddenly, puff, they were gone and uh, none could be found only makes sense if they were transferred to a nearby uh, state. Well, this is something that Mills, you're knowledgeable of much more than I. So, uh, yeah, I, I would gladly accept your explanation. But if you've heard from the elite that it was all about oil, uh, uh, my statement was not categorically that oil had nothing to do with it. What I said was America didn't get so much as a quart of oil for our involvement there, even though in theory we were supposed to have been paid for our participation by the sale of oil. We never got so much as a quart. Yes, we were definitely shortchanged 
They said that the Iraqi war would be paid for by the oil in the country, and you are correct. The American government has never been repaid, never been given anything back for what we did. There are certain Americans, in particular one president, who has made a literal fortune off of Iraqi oil after the uh, war was over. Who was that? Uh, I can't. I, I guess I'm free to give this. I gave it on a few radio shows over the years. Back a few years ago, a gentleman came forth. Uh, first of all, his mother contacted me, and then she told me that her son was the one who had been given the responsibility of guarding the main Iraqi oil port while he was a, in the service. Uh, then he was willing to talk with me, and he did one time. And he said, Chaplain Williams, the other day I was watching the ships being loaded with oil from the Iraqi port. And he said, I asked some questions, and I was told that that oil was being sold or being used by or sold by the Clinton family and that this huge tanker that I was guarding, thinking that it was doing America some good or some of the rest of the world some good, he said, I was given de de details as to how the Clinton family was actually making the profits off of that oil tanker. Wow. First time I've heard this, and that's powerful. Any follow-up, Mel? Oh, he's gone. Okay. I, I appreciate your sharing that. that. The more we talk, the more we learn. And uh, so the Clintons and Hillary now will have access to that wealth. Uh, they did the United States no good at all because we know that the government got nothing. But the Clintons personally profited from the death of our own troops. I, I find that despicable. It is, and I would have had trouble believing it if I had not talked to a young man. He was in his 20s uh, who was actually given the responsibility for guarding one of the main ports, and he was knowledgeable enough to ask the right questions, and he was so dumbfounded at what he had learned until he was willing to talk with me later, not willing for me to give his name, but we were willing to talk with me, and when he told me that, I realize that great profits are being made by some of our government officials off of the Iraqi oil. Jackie, welcome. Hi there. I love this program. You guys are so full of information that we need. So thank you for having your guest on. Well, I'm very grateful that he's here. Well, I've already called the hospital, and they are sending me some information. And so hopefully we can utilize that. Um, but you talked about the signs in the heavens. The heavens are for the signs, or I don't know how you said it. Um, but I don't know if you noticed. Um, I know Lindsay would not know this, but Mills, I don't know if you saw this this past Sunday. Um, we noticed a very low-hanging rainbow, but it was not on the east side of the valley where they normally you would see them. It was on the north end of the valley. Did you see that by any chance? I did not. It was a very large rainbow, but it was very low hanging, almost almost as if it could almost be touching the ground, you know, the center of the rainbow. Um, but it was located on the north end of the valley. And I don't know if Lindsay has any comments on that or not. I, of course, do not live in Salt Lake or in Utah. I will say this. You definitely should expect and look for divine events to take place in the very near future, and even the elite know it's going to happen, and they are aware of the fact to expect something like this. Well, I personally saw it. My husband saw it. There were several of us that saw it. Um, there is actually a picture of it on the Internet. Um, someone took a picture, and so it was definitely there, and I, I didn't know if you had seen it, Mills, or not, but... Uh, they are happening. I think they've been happening for a while. People need to look up to the heavens instead of down to the ground. Couldn't agree more. 
Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call, Jackie. Bye-bye. We've only got a couple of minutes uh, left, uh, Reverend Williams. I want to give you the final say. Set their spiritual house in order. I know we've talked about everything physical imaginable from hospitals in Mexico to the financial to other things. Folks, you know, when it comes right down to it, your relationship with Jesus Christ and your relationship with God is the most important thing there is. You can stand, and your family will be able to stand everything that's coming if you have set your spiritual house in order. And I beg of you to do that first before you do anything else. Please know where you stand. Know about your salvation. Be assured of your position in heaven. When I was at the IBC hospital, and we spent three weeks there with this friend of ours, Sarah, recently. And while I was there, there was a man who had come there because he learned about the hospital from one of my DVDs. And one night he was leaving the next morning. He came by and sat down at my table after dinner. Nobody else was in the dining hall. And he said, Chaplain, uh, I hope I'll see you again someday. And I said, well, if I don't see you down here, I'll see you up there. And he said, no, I won't. I won't see you up there. And I said, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you don't know Christ as your Savior, you don't know heaven as your home? He said, no. He said, I've never been able to settle that. Well, Mill sitting right there at the table, I quoted him, John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I said, would you like to believe right now? He said, well, sure, I'd love to settle this. And right there in the dining room, a BioCare hospital. This man trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. Folks, I would beg of you, settle the spiritual things first, and everything else will fall in order. So per- you will need... Yes, Bill. Oh, a perfect end of the show. And I thank you once again for being there. We will have you back soon. Thank you, Mills. Lord bless. And the Lord bless you, sir.